The Sustainable Built Environment National Research Centre is a unique blend of industry, government and research partners working across Australian industry with key links internationally. So what is this weird new public transport system that you can see? It's a trackless tram. That's what we're calling it. It's electric, but it's got batteries on the roof and it is using the very latest in technology to enable public transport to be transformative. Every city wants better public transport. It's the number one agenda across the world and certainly in Australian cities. But it's all been about government having to pay for it and they don't have much money anymore. Governments everywhere are trying to get out of paying for things. So how do we do it? Well, there is a way and it uses private sector funding because they build around the transport and they like to do that because the value of the land is raised by the public transport. So why shouldn't they pay for it? Railways are coming back in a big way all around the world and we've called this the, the second rail revolution. A lot of countries, they, they're seeing railways as a, a potential means to achieve their development goals and also to do that in a sustainable way. And so they need to look at how they can fund the infrastructure and how they can better integrate it with their cities. For example, a London Crossrail, the, the largest infrastructure project in Europe. And through a fairly long process of negotiation, they were able to secure funding commitments from property owners and from an increment on their, their business rates. There's a railway called the Miami Bright Line, which runs from Miami up to Fort Lauderdale, and that's being built by a real estate developer. But they started out in railways in the 19th century, and now they're coming back to that business. This isn't particularly new idea. It's, uh, it's been continuously practiced in various Asian cities for a long time. The, the Japanese in particular got very, very good at combining development and railways in this way. This sort of business model is about as old as railways themselves. An ideal way to demonstrate integrated transport and land use funding would be to start with a corridor. Joining important destinations, but also looking at the urban fabric along those corridors, and in particular, the urban fabric around the transport stops along the corridors. It's a chance to demonstrate how those transport stops change the land use in the nature of the corridors and can contribute funding to the overall transport project. Canning City Centre is 10,000 dwellings. The intention is to really ramp this area up. We're looking to have a trackless tram down Cecil Avenue that will enable this future development to be connected to other areas of Perth. I believe there's a real opportunity for partnership between uh, the local government, developers and transport authorities. The differences between a trackless tram and a tram is it doesn't have the ugly overhead catenary wires, it doesn't have rails, so it's a, a, an easier beast to implement. The time is now. Three years ago, light rail was probably the best option. The time now is to look at these new technologies and say, is this the time for us to shift into something new? The trackless tram can be put in very easily. You don't have to dig up the road to put in light rail tracks. That can cost 120 million per kilometre in some places. And many light rail projects are at least 50 million per kilometre. Trackless trams can be put in for about 5 million or less per kilometre. Now that's transformative. It's a game changer.